just like I said it last week, I figured out what I wanted to say in not really the middle of the night, but by the time I went to sleep, I remember what I wanted to say, and I was That's so right. annoyed. Mm-hmm. What did it end up being? <laughs> doesn't even make sense anymore if I go to say it because so the, the thing was I, I don't even remember what we were talking about but ultimately what I wrote here was literally stop living in the moment and I had something really good but clearly it wasn't good enough because I couldn't remember it but that was what it was and I'm fucking so upset because it would have worked good now it just doesn't make sense because someone's going to be like what the fuck is he talking about yeah it's very out of context it's super out of context Mind you, I find a lot of times we talk about stuff that are out of context. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the F Word Podcast, an affiliate of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. I'm your host, G, and with me is just Fass. What's up? Not much. Not much. Anthony is out helping a friend, as it were. So, that's what he's doing. Good for him. Yeah, it is good for him, I guess. Poor I guess. Poor timing. <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Um, I'm trying to find the last one I did for the Connexus ad because the Saskatchewan podcast network is sponsored by the Connexus credit union. Um, before I get to that, I hope everyone's having a good listening day. I hope you're having a good week, uh, a good hour, a good, whatever, um, just in general, overall good stuff. Um, I want to give a shout out once again to Henry Greenberg because he gave me probably the best news I've heard in a long time in that guy that he found next to his car that was listening to our podcast. And he, A, recognized that it was us, and Mm -hmm. B, just some random dude was listening to us in their car, which I was like, well, that's dope. I I I wouldn't have expected that. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just like, well. Almost serendipitous. It's great. It's really great. Is it serendipitous? I don't know. I just like using oh. that word sometimes. Oh, well, it's better if you use it in the right form. It's like, I don't think that word means what you think it means. <laughs> what was that from? Princess Bride. Oh, jeez. Were you kind of inconceivable or something like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that was really cool. And so thank you, Henry, for bringing that to us and yelling and calling him uh, Anthony a fruitcake in the middle of a busy restaurant or bar. That was super awesome of you. Because it's just hilarious. Um, yeah, it's just going to be you and me today. Yeah. Uh, let me get through this ad. The Saskatchewan Podcast Network is supported by Conexus. Wellness, however you define it, is achievable. You don't even need to figure it all out yourself. Talk to Conexus. They'll give you guidance, motivation, and the push you need to reach your goals. They've got you. They're your financial partner, and they know you can achieve your very best, your financial best. Prove them right. Start right at Conexus Credit Union. Thanks, Conexus. That was ad number six. I think I might have skipped some because I'm on the last one. I'm going to have to actually start poning up and writing these down like I said I was going to. Oh, well. But I haven't like an idiot. It's all good. Oh, okay. due diligence yeah but anyways yeah it, the whole thing was like stop living in the moment and then so i decided to jot down some moments when living in the moment it goes wrong and it works against you and one of the examples um i wanted to bring up was like if you've eaten a lot in the afternoon like you've had a big lunch mm-hmm. and then you tell somebody oh i'm not gonna eat for a week a lot of people say that as a hyperbole mm-hmm but some people like say that, oh, I'll, I won't be able to eat for the rest of the day. I swear. I'm like, let's, 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 let's let that play out. Yeah. And then six o'clock comes in and the Dorito sweet chili heat hits the table. There oh, you're hitting again. it for sure. You're hitting it. You're hitting it again. That's it. Just, just, that's when I've said that to Soph. Stop living in the moment, sweetheart. Just stop. It's not working. Mm-hmm. Not all the time, of course. It's like a Chappelle show when he had to keep it real goes wrong. <laughs> yeah. Some people just want to, well, and this is almost the opposite because you're technically not keeping it real in a way. No. The, but it is the same ethos. Mm-hmm. I've been trying to use that word more. 
So your word of the day, toilet paper or some shit? No. <laughs> I do have an app, though, for people that want to learn about words. Mm-hmm. And by learn about words, but you like you get a word of the day. And try to use it. And Well, you try to use it or at least you know know what the damn word means. Mm. Um, yeah, I've seen that where you got to... You got to work that word somehow into your day to day. So, I mean, most most words could are not to say universal, but they can become they can come up in some way. But it's like it's one of those things that's where um, you're breaking down like a, uh, a whole entire paragraph. Well, you limit the amount of words you use by using that one word. Yeah. Well, and I have a very bad knack and I said it for a very long time mm-hmm. of using four words when really one could get the whole thing dealt yep. with yep um so the app is called vocabulary builder as it were uh but the Very word of, but today's word was actually hurdle oh yeah so it wasn't i didn't have it move or cause to move at high speed typically in an uncontrolled manner let's see if you can work that into the show somehow well in a sentence it would be the explosion no no, no it's gotta happen naturally met. hold on okay fine the explosion sent pieces of metal and glass hurtling through the air. Yeah, and I think most people understand what it means. No, well, maybe there's somebody out there that's like, huh, I didn't know the actual definition. Like, everyone knows. Like, there's a lot of words that I know what they mean when people say them. I just don't know the definition, and therefore, I choose not to use them in sentences because I don't actually know exactly how they work. Mm-hmm. The other one yesterday's was progno- prognosticate. Prognosticate. Okay, yeah. that's not very natural. But, but you've heard it, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, you prognosticate. Right. So you foretell or prophecy a future event. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's not what we're going to do. No. Well, actually, kind of, I guess, when we talk about shit that happens later on. Mm, yeah, I get prognosticate. You're going to you're just guessing what the end result might be. Yeah. On any news that we got, it's like, oh, how this play out? Well, it could play out like this or mm. it could play out like that. Yeah. So maybe you are procrastinating, whatever. Prognosticating. Prognosticating. Procrastinating is something else. True. Is what I do on a regular basis. There and you what go. most of us do. Yeah. Yeah, no. I got a new phone. I already cool. told you that. I, uh, ordered, I ordered my new phone. Yeah, you're getting the Note 10 giant thing. That's the Note be 10 covering. Plus. Is it going to cover your face? No, it's not quite. It's 6.8. I can't imagine it's that much bigger than what you have. You have the <laughs> 10 plus? No, just the 10. So this is what happened. I go there and I mention that I want the 10 plus. And then next thing I know, he's already processing through. And I look down. I'm like, is that just the 10? He's like, yeah, that's the one we chose. I'm like, well, no, I chose the 10 plus. So then he told me the price difference. And I was like, and then he told me the actual difference between the two. Which is I'm nothing. Like, nothing. And it was cheaper by. Take it back. 35 bucks. Take so, it back. No, man. Oh. I don't Get what it. you want. It's not I, worth it. I enjoy this right now. Whatever. I'm enjoying this right now. Because the 10 plus would have been bigger than my other phone. True. Which is big, which is the biggest that I would want it to be. Mm. And this is just slightly stepped down from the what 10 you plus. you would actually want it. Yeah. From, sorry, from the 8 plus that I had. Mm-hmm. And then if I would have gotten like the 9 plus, it probably would have been the same yep. thing. I, my guess is that's how they operate. With yeah, it. yeah. But anyways, you guys didn't come for that stuff. You came here for some news. Uh, the first thing I got is Guillermo del Toro is getting his star on the Walk of Fame this mm-hmm. month. It is August 2019, and Guillermo del Toro is getting a star on the Walk of Fame, which I think is pretty cool. Very well deserved. I would say so. Um, and also to a person that's very well deserving of it, not just because of his ask- oh, yeah, accolades. He's, a, he's, he's a such a nice act. guy. Oh, yeah. Like, have you seen him in interviews? Uh, yeah. It's so heartwarming to listen to him mm-hmm. talk about shit, which is so crazy because oh, he's yeah. got a fucked up imagination. Like, that dude, he he probably has one of the greatest imaginations I've seen for cinema. Because he writes a lot of the stuff that he like he produces, right? Like, he, was yeah. the Shape of Water was his written. Yep. Pan's Labyrinth. Yep. Yeah, he did get the it. Hellboys. He didn't write those, did he? He didn't write those, but I mean, like he had he adapted them. His flair is yeah. in it, like even the Blade, original two with uh, Ron Perlman. Yes, yes, yes. Not the newest one. Even with uh, Blade Two. Like Blade Two had That's much right. more that of a Guillermo del Toro vibe in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I also keep forgetting that Donnie Yen's in that one. Oh yeah, that's right. He is in that. Yeah, they severely underused him in that. Uh, was he well established then? You think? Well, as a that martial was like artist, what ninety eight? Oh, I don't know. That must have been like no. I think the first 90s. one came out in ninety eight. Oh really? This one came out was like two thousand and three. Oh, okay. Maybe I don't remember. That's quite a while ago. Well, almost twenty years. You know what else is twenty years this year? The Matrix. That's true. And they're releasing it in theaters. Nice. IMAX? So, 
probably. That'd be good. I wonder if they're, I haven't read anything about how they're going to, if they're going to like tweak some of the technical stuff behind it. You think they would touch it? They might have to, part up, of me they, says no. They might have to like up convert it so that it plays well on the digital side. Cause think about how it's excelled since then, since its first release. It was still in theaters. Of well, course, there's some but. scenes like specifically when Trinity flies through that window in the opening scene. Oh, if you think if they cleaned up. Sup- that looks super yeah, bad now. If they cleaned up all the CGI and that's that what I mean. Stuff. Well, yeah. I, I mean more that just not to clean it up to the point where it loses its essence and maybe. I should just shut up and they shouldn't touch anything because well, they risk ruining what it was. But here's the thing. What if they went back? The second one probably was way more CGI heavy. For 100%. Sure. But it so was, if they went no, back and retouched either. all that with CGI, I, I, you wouldn't lose any of its essence. All it did was clean it up and bring it up yeah. to today's standards of CGI, I guess you could say. But if they decide to live in the moment and dive deep into them being like, let's clean this up. Excuse me, I just burped. That was gross. And then let's clean this up, and then this, and then this, and the next thing you know, Mm -hmm. they go off the rails like Hollywood tends to do, and they go too far. Yeah. Well, I don't. There's a risk of going too far. All I would say is based on living in that moment of pure ecstasy, hurtling themselves into the stratosphere. All right, that's yes. I don't even know. That wasn't that organic in any way, shape, or form. I don't know. You didn't see it coming. I I kind of did. You were kind of off on your tangent, and you of. just went crazy That's there. That's the whole point, because yeah. then I could misdirect you into... But yeah, Matrix cleanup would be good. Yeah, hurtling that. insults my oh, way. My <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Are you yeah. going to go see it? Uh, you know what? Maybe. Depends. IMAX, the RIMAX here is just kind of weird with its times and... And their popcorn and, sucks. Well, you just bring in your own. Hopefully, it's during. Hopefully, you release it during uh, winter, so you can just what, hide it in like jackets and stuff. Yeah, but what if you go to another theater and just get popcorn and bring good it popcorn in popcorn, and then bring it to that theater? Well, again, you hide it in your thing. Though I'm sure they'll have they'll be prissy about it. You can't bring any outside food and that It'll kind be of jazz. Tough to bring in that combo one under the jacket or a big purse. Maybe it's gonna have to take. Uh, Talk to your those, wife. Let it make sure she brings a big purse. One of those George Costanza Gore-Tex. Yeah, there you go. Gore-Tex. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Movie still holds up. It's yep. very good. I think it's still awesome. Um, 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 and we talked about it on the Red Pill Theory episode. So if you want to talk... We, it, that was a very good episode. So if you want to go back and listen to a really... And take the red pill. And take the red pill, as it were, mm. uh, into our thoughts on the supposed Matrix reboot and the Matrix yeah. in general... Go over to episode I don't know what called Red Pill Theory. Mm-hmm. Uh, Joker movie supposedly Oscar worthy according to the Venice Film Festival, and everything coming out of it is nothing but amaze balls. And I'm super so happy screened. about that. I imagine, given its like its tone, I think it has that essence from the beginning that okay, it's going to be very um, heartfelt. It's going to bring out a different performance in this type of Joker, not the type of like superhero slash whatever. Again. We think Joker, we think superhero, Batman, all that's connected. This is on its own. So it definitely has that potential with the the tone it pervaded through the through the preview. And now that you say that it's already screened and reviews are... Film festivals, film yeah. festivals. Which and that's And that's the crowd you want to appease for that kind of stuff anyway. If you can They'll get create the pompous that people, yeah. yeah. But at the, like, and that's the interesting thing because it's kind of... Like Tarantino does this. Tarantino's a festival guy and, yep. and then he's able to like blend the two worlds bring the two worlds in together um because a lot of movies that get put in festivals a lot of people don't see them yeah because that's, the, that's their one-stop being, shop and they if they don't or oscars like it goes yeah. a couple of festivals like the festival circuit and then it ends up at oscars if it's you know just as good as everyone says it is yeah uh typically you wouldn't see a joker movie mm-hmm. in that so that's really dope I was super excited from the first trailer. Mm-hmm. I'm a massive fan of Taxi Driver. This still feels like Taxi Driver, and I'm really excited for it because yeah. I, I think it's going to be, I I think it's going to do two things. One, it's going to be an amazing um, movie that I hope it is Oscar worthy because obviously yeah. we haven't seen it yet. Mm-hmm. But it'll not be the whole argument of oh, it's a superhero movie; it shouldn't get nominated and everything like that, which. I can understand from yeah. an artistic perspective, but if this movie comes in that is is of two worlds, yeah, and threads the needle very similar to Heath Ledger's Joker's performance threaded that needle, yeah, this is the type of movie that'll do it. Yeah, it's gonna be like that 
We want that. We want more of that. And yeah. I think that is what people are going to But be do you think that for. would translate to a full on, like if you were to introduce Batman into the scenario, let's say out of nowhere, mm-hmm. I don't think it would work as well if you're going for that artistic um, DC stuff kind of thing. Yeah, I, I, think, I, so I think I think as a standalone, it does better. Just to, from yeah. the views I've seen and whatever, I think as a standalone, it works great. Has no affiliation other than he's called the Joker. Well, we and don't might, know, and he happens to live in. Gotham. It's called the Joker, but we don't know what. Like we know that is, but it does live in the world. Arthur, okay, it lives in a world of Gotham, and okay. it lives in a world where this character is suffering from mental illness and yeah. a caregiver to his own mother, who might have been a mother that's been overbearing mm-hmm. on himself, and uh, there's a lot going on there. Yeah, just from the trailer, you can tell that there's going to be so many layers to it. Yeah. So to hear that is really cool. And for Todd Phillips, it's going to be like, oh, this is the movie that's going to bring you to the forefront of everybody. Yeah. Like Adam McKay was a very, very good director. Okay. I think he's really funny. He obviously he did Step Brothers. He did Talladega Nights. Then he did the big short mm-hmm. and he got nominated for the movie, got nominated for some Oscars. And yeah. I, I thought it was a great movie. Big short. I actually hadn't seen it in, uh, until I think Christmas time. It's this, good though. I was like, I was blown away actually. Yeah. So. And so you get a director like that that's comedic, very yep. similar to Todd Phillips. And then their movie gets, I think he it was Best Original Screenplay that it won for, and then one other one. He was nominated for Best Picture yeah. that year. So that's a movie that puts a director to the forefront. Mm-hmm. Doesn't seem to do very well for the actors, though. It's really weird. Like, actors that get the Oscars, mm-hmm. very few of them end up doing great things. Like, there's a supposed Oscar curse. Like, the... the um, Unless you're Meryl The Street. Madden. Like, the... Yeah. <laughs> like the Madden games where like yeah, if yeah. you're on the cover of Madden or the NHL you're gonna, or NBA, you're gonna like just tank yeah that's that's a thing I guess hmm. interesting so I'm super Paranoia. excited for that uh, Andy Circus to direct Venom 2 yep I think it'll be good yeah I don't know he's been at the they used uh, motion capture for the Venom obviously right when they first released on for sure so I would say Andy Serkis is one of like the pioneers behind that. Obviously playing him, but he's also now in got himself involved in every everything motion capture related. He's at the forefront of it in some way, shape, or form, helping out. Um, obviously his own roles plus helping and stuff like that. So him directing an entire film like this um, should be interesting. He's very confident, and he has, definitely thinks it's going to be... Uh, a big thing is what he says. I can't remember his exact words, but uh, how did how did Mowgli exciting. do? Because that was his first di- directorial debut. See, the problem is that was the wrong story to pull off anyway. I didn't see it because I already saw the Jungle Book mm-hmm. from John Favreau. This is supposed to be different, apparently. But I've already seen that that character, that story brought to life in live action. I guess you can say I don't need to see it again. So I I never actually watched it, so I don't know how it played out, but it didn't do very well story-wise. Now, if you want to say on the technical side, it might have been an achievement, mm-hmm. more so than even John Favreau's, right? The yeah, Jungle I Book. So again, I don't know. I haven't seen it. I'm just kind of guessing. It's on Netflix. Maybe I should watch it because yeah. I really like it. Is it a Netflix Book. original, technically? I think so. So there you go. Yeah, I think it's on there. Yeah. I don't know. I'd, I I'm not having seen good. it, I don't know what to say. The only thing yeah. I can say is that, yeah, it, does he know mocap? Of course he knows. Absolutely, yeah. And not only that, it wasn't that he was like at the forefront of it. He's the one that was able to like he brought it to life like nobody else did. He True. is the king of mocap. Yeah. Which I think would be good because a lot of the criticism a lot of the criticisms that Venom had, aside from the fact that it was just a mediocre movie, is mm-hmm. that by the end of it it just looked like everything blended together. Yeah. Like you had this black blob mm-hmm. fighting this dark gray blob on a back a dark black drop. Yeah. And it looked super messy. Mhm. But the scenes that it was just what's his face and venom, yeah, where it was like coming out of his body and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Those scenes look relatively clean. Yeah. So maybe he's going to be able to like incorporate more into it because we don't know yeah. what this Venom 2 movie is going to be about and clean it up. Clean it well, up, make it look good and be like It should be about Carnage. Sure. It's already been teased i think he the smart move for him would definitely be to continue that story and not push that aside to like oh venom 3 see i would say venom 3 would be better because you think what they should do is build on venom Mm -hmm. and then have a second movie that's like really good and then get people excited for the third movie which will be carnage 
Mm. Could be the, interesting. The thing is, who's your villain going to be? I don't know. Like so I said, you've already Carnage set is an up. easy one. You yeah. already had Riot. Um, I don't know who else you can have. That guy is done. Uh, whoever played, what's his name? I don't know. The A villain. Re- um, Rez something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, so I don't know what you could do. Maybe, be, maybe, but again, be, but then what do you do then if if Carnage and Venom does very well and what you just keep having a string of Carnage and Venom movies until they decide to bring Spider Man into the fold? There's content there. I don't know if anything from the first one followed anything from comics. Uh, no, I'm not saying that. I'm no, just but I'm saying, saying in, they have they have something to go off of. If there's yeah. if there's a Venom series somewhere in of the course comics, there is. Book, so there's they tons have of it. There you go. They got something to do. So Carnage might not be his only. Foe. But I'm saying no, it's it's not. There's tons of symbiotes. There's yeah. a ton of symbiotes. Uh, but I'm what I'm saying is that great. You can have all the content in the world, mm-hmm. but if, unless you're able to translate it to box office dollars, for sure, then it does nothing for you. Yep. So they could have volumes of Venom stuff, which there are. Do. There's a ton of Venom content out there. Yep. But you have to pick the ones that people are going to know. So Carnage is it. Mm-hmm. It is it. Like when you have Spider Man, you have Venom, you have Carnage, and then you can maybe, and then maybe, um, what is it? Uh, Agent Venom. Yeah. But even he's more of an ex- obscure character. Mm-hmm. Uh, Riot was an obscure character, but like they focused a little bit on him on the trailer. So it's like, oh, it's another symbiote. So symbiote versus symbiote. Yeah. Excuse me. Mm. That was a yawn. Wow. I apologize. Um, but I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how, um, I don't know what the right play would be. Like if I'm the studio person or the studio exec and trying to exec and trying to roll out things, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know what the order would be. Ideally, I'd have Spider-Man fight Venom, and then the third one be Carnage. Yeah, that'd be great. Where they team up and fight Carnage. Yeah, yeah. Or what you do is you create a movie that starts with Venom, but then what it does is it bleeds into actual Carnage movie. Mm. So. Venom brings you into the opening act of the movie up to the first act or something and things are going on. Yeah. And then what it does is it then switches over, switches perspectives to now you're actually following Cletus Cassidy Mm -hmm. as as he turns into Venom and his maniacalness of that. Carnage. Of Carnage. And then you've got Venom towards the end realizing what this is. Mm Mm-hmm. And then you get the full reveal of Carnage, and then you're like, "Holy shit!" Now we gotta wait for episode or for Venom three. Shit, that would kind of suck. I have to say that would kind of suck. Another cliffhanger again, of with the same, but in, in the reveal s- almost in the sense that it'll be. He said Carnage at the end. That was literally the last words of the entire sure. movie, right? Uh, and then you're telling me that Carnage, full symbiote Carnage will be on the last thing you see of the second one. That's an interesting point. That's what I'm picking up when you But I'm also looking at it from like you really want to get the, you're you're going to if you're going for a third, which you're going to want to go for a third. Yeah. You don't want it to be so formulaic that it's going to be like, okay, Venom the first one, then Venom versus Carnage and then the third one's going to be Spider-Man Venom Carnage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or sorry, Spider-Man and Venom versus Carnage cuz that's the real big bad, right? Yeah. Interesting. So then if you do it from this, the perspective of Cassidy yeah, and then what you do is kind of like the opening of The Incredible Hulk, which isn't the best movie to reference, but like, you know, that opening fight scene when Edward Norton goes into that factory yeah, and they kind of show like a little bit of the Hulk mm-hmm. and then they show a reveal of him. Yeah. I think there's a way to end it with Carnage actually prevailing and beating the crap out of Venom. Yeah. And while you're getting the full reveal, so maybe it's not it's not a, just a quick glance reveal, it's an actual <coughs> as it's walking you through the film, yeah, and you're seeing shades of carnage, like you're seeing the red symbiote thing coming out and killing somebody, and so on and so forth. Because that still has to come to light too. Yeah, how is that? Because that's going to come out of nowhere realistically. And if they do it quick and dirty, that would also suck too. Which is why you transition it because yeah. clearly he gets because the difference yeah. between Venom and Carnage is that Venom has it on his on his outside. Yeah, Carnage has it running through his veins and blood. Oh, okay. And it actually morphs his entire being. That's why he can he can turn into almost like he just he's he's just a whole whack of things. Whereas yeah. Venom. He can create weird things from his shoulders and his and arms and all that. Kind of thing. And yeah, whereas Carnage actually can morph because it's in his blood and has taken over his entire system. Interesting. So that's something I think you would need to show an audience. Mm-hmm. Watch the evolution of that. 
like whether it's his hand kind of collapsing to go through something because the symbiote has been able to stretch itself over yeah. whatever. The issue I could also see with that is that it falls into almost Mr. Fantastic territory. So uh, you don't want it to show stretching yeah. Yeah. to the point where it's unrealistic. But, I mean, we are dealing with symbiote, so the fuck You really, mean? yeah, you can play with that. But I think the second one will be and probably should be and will be most likely a Carnage beats Venom. And then the third one's going to be, mm-hmm. I think it, maybe not will be, but it should be. Yeah. And then the third one is when Spider-Man comes in. Yeah. And then you get a Spider-Man, like you get Venom fighting Spider-Man in Spider-Man's movie, and then all of a sudden you get Spider-Man coming into yeah. the Venom 3 movie to fight Carnage kind of thing. Yeah, it should be interesting. But then all the while you're like, well, where the fuck's Carnage this whole time? <laughs> that's a weird thing. Yeah. Anyways, that's what I got on that one. But uh, all the power to any circus, I guess. That's true. Um, Do you want to have anything before I get into the, I guess, the shits? The Seth Rogen. Well, thanks for speaking. Boiling. Whatever, man. Just go. Yes, it. it was a Seth Rogen, and and also it kind of falls into the Justice for Han thing, which I threw in there too. Oh, okay. So Seth Rogen rightfully calls out Game of Thrones season eight as being a fucking nightmare, which I thought it was hilarious, and he was roasting them for them not being at Comic Con, which I think is even like, which is funny. You cowards! <laughs> yeah, I think it's super funny because it's like you guys butchered the last two seasons and you guys aren't even willing to face the fans over it that means that you know you fucked up it's not just oh the fans didn't like it and they didn't understand they would have gotten eaten up for sure but they would have deserved it they fucked up hard i was talking to herc the other day and i haven't talked to him since the end of the season and it wasn't because that season broke us so hard that it almost ruined our friendship it just (laughs) these things happen yeah and he was like i fucking watched that last episode and he's like, I hate it even more than I hated it when I watched it the first time. <laughs> and I was, and we were talking about it the whole ride. Like I was on my way to band practice, and we were talking about it. Yeah. Like after the dust has settled, yet he decided a week ago to watch it again. Yeah. And and we it just like everything just seemed even more clear because the whole hype train left after episode three, at yeah. least for me. And then all you're left with is the like the legitimate issues that the show has that you can't. You, what is it you can't just let them not come to light yeah you can't hide them because it all affects everything yeah right uh yeah right down to the fact that like ned stark's character was absolutely betrayed by the showrunners yeah like they shat on the fact that he died with the biggest secret in the world and he was a total badass for keeping that secret and sullying his own name yeah. literally meant nothing to the creators. That is betrayal, my friend. Mm. That is like in Dante's Inferno, betrayal is, I think it's Inferno. Anyways, yeah. betrayal is the final depth of hell. Is that true or are you just saying No, that? it's true. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so it's at the bottom. Hmm. And so for you to betray a guy like Ned Stark who no matter what was going on in the show, he was always there. That's so that was a weird thing for me. He was yeah. always there. You guys done fucked up. You done fucked up. Yeah, they got handed a Ferrari and treated like a lawnmower. Fucked up. Yeah, that's what they did. Yeah. And not only that, they left the lawnmower in the shed and they didn't even bother to go back to it again. Does that work? No. no you Sorry. lost it. Oh, I lost but it. good try. Thanks. <laughs> What's your Justice good for Han thing? Good for, good for <laughs> or, Seth Rogen, though. All I'm yeah, saying is that's calling him out. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like, facing the fans would have been... They, I don't even know if they would have gotten a word in. There's nothing you could say to justify it. It's like I think they would have because they're all moderated. Yeah, I guess. I said, because they're moderated, you have somebody that's going to take control of the whole thing. Yeah. So then the, the only problem is that... I, the, the problem that I see is, mm-hmm. is the fact that their answers would have been these trite and organized predetermined answers yeah that wouldn't actually give a true answer to what was going on mm-hmm. and i think what most people are thinking is like well you guys just wanted to move on to star wars and now you guys got this huge 200 million dollar what is it 200 million dollar netflix deal yeah, kind of segues nice. They just got it from Netflix, yeah. Two hundred so, million for like whatever content they create. Yeah. So I mean, like, you guys clearly just wanted to wrap this thing up and just get it over with, even though George R. Yeah. R. Martin wanted more seasons, but he also is, you know, taking a sweet ass time on the winds of winter. Which well, supposedly he's, he's, is done or he's something. He's guaranteeing it's gonna be released this year. 
Either way, that'll be very interesting. I, I'm looking forward to not reading it because I haven't read the other books, so it wouldn't be you look forward to not reading it? No, no, no. I oh. look. I, I'm not going to read it. Oh, okay. Because I haven't read the other ones, oh. but I am going to well, be going. Obviously, yeah. Watch in order. But I am going to be getting into audiobooks really quick here. Oh. And so I'm probably going to buy them on audiobook because I have a lot of time to listen to audio at work. I wonder, do they have audiobooks with the actual actors reading them? No, no, oh, no. They're just they have they have really good audio actors. Sometimes the authors themselves do it. Yeah, like yeah. there's a couple of books I know where the author themselves actually did the audio book for it. <clears throat> so that yeah. works out good. I'm but, I'd be kind of cool if they did get them because there's um. But the characters are all different, though. They're not the same. Sorry, characters. the actors. The no, actors. no, but the, but the actors are are different. They they have different lines in the books than they do in the show. I I understand that, but like I'm saying, hire them to do the audio book. But what's the point of doing the audio book? That's on something that's vastly different. They won't know that material. They know a very short, condensed version of that material. Do you know what I mean? I'm just going for the voice here. No, I know, but the voice doesn't do anything if they don't know what they're do- like. What you just want them to say some of the words that are similar? Well, it'd just be their voice saying it. So I was gonna say that there's YouTube channel is watching on the lore of Game of Thrones, like on all the houses. So if it was like House Lannister, mm-hmm. you had Charles Dance in there, you had Nikolai on there, you also had Lena Headley and Peter Dinklage all had a portion to say about the history of House Lannister and that kind of stuff. That's what I'm saying. They had something. To, they had something to add to it as an actor of that house and of that character. So it's more, it's it's almost like a meta reading of it. Like it's yeah. not necessarily that the, you're wanting them to read their lines exactly, but you're actually wanting them to be like, just oh, be a be, part of it. Yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, it's a recognizable voice mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. That's all. That'd I'm be interesting. Going actually, for. that's it. That's that's not a bad idea. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, I just thought, like, I, I just thought we were we were talking past each other in the sense that, like, you're like, oh, it'd be great to have them come back and and read their lines, but I'm saying, I'm like. Well, no, their lines are different. Like no, the man, situations read the are book, different. The audio book itself that'd be interesting to do, but then you have to sit. There. Like, it would take forever. The audio book's already out, anyways. So. Well, I get that. I'm just saying, if it was, you know what, you could just picture them in your mind. Whatever, man. Now that you have a physical representation. What's your next this rant? Is what, this, <laughs> what, this is what John would say, and how John would say it. Um, the just for Han thing. It was fun. I don't even know what that's what? about. What's going on? Apparently, the writer of Hobbs and Shaw has been going on this campaign of justice for Han. In what way? Well, I want to. I forgot to add the fucking article. Like an idiot. Either. I thought I did. Hold on. Justice for Han Harambe. <laughs> <laughs> First thing that pops up on Google. <laughs> People are still on that. Hobbs and Shaw star Jason Statham. This is from Digital Spy. No. Uh, let's go. Fails to provide. That was a collider. How Hobbs and Shaw fails to provide justice for Han. Oh, no. Uh, reverse heel turn. The Vulture. Let's go see what the Vulture has to say about this. Um. So, apparently there's this thing where... There's a justice for Han type of deal going on. Okay. And what's that predicated on? Um, that he got killed. Hold off. on, hold on. Uh, Shaw director. So Hobbs and Shaw director David Leach refers to a white hat is a testament to how conventional movie physics don't apply to the increasingly bonkers fast franchise. That's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, without it, a Corona chugging out loss. Sure. Uh, Tokyo Drift is a Shaw. Sure. When we pitched Jason, this is what the, I think the writer, Chris Morgan, was saying. When we pitched Jason on coming in at the end of Fast 6, he was concerned about playing a bad guy, and then he did a heel turn. The reverse heel begins in Fate of the Furious when he's nice again, sure. Mm -hmm. Just trying to hit the climax. Morgan speaks of a rise after the conclusion of Fate. See, and his character as, as Deckard Shaw yeah, it's it was a villain, kind of a villain against our main cast kind of thing. Yeah, but he was he was driven by the same, uh, same things as the like Vin Diesel's crew, right? Like the Toretto crew. So he's he's uh, what's it? He's um, he's driven okay, by so, family and that kind of stuff. So this is it. Hold on. Still, as I point out to Morgan, even as Shaw's nobler impulses come to the fore, it's impossible to overlook the blood on his hands, namely Hans, because mm-hmm. they're trying to make him like what's real family and family and family yeah, yeah. and family. Uh, this is what Chris Morgan said. A couple of things I'll say about that. One, Han is one of my very favorite characters. That's such a stupid argument to say in this. Okay. He's my favorite character. 
uh, in the fast world, not to mention is a good friend. We love him mm-hmm. so much that when he died at the end of Fast 3, we changed the timeline to keep him alive. Sure. There, there's a great arc that is happening, and that arc is Deckard Shaw and Justice for Han. I love that people are calling for it, and it makes me happy because I feel it as well. It's something that we want to give its due. There's a touch to it in this movie, a line where Deckard says right before something. He says something, there's things that I have to make amends for, and that's his justice for Sh- for Han. Okay. I guess that's what the whole thing's about. Well, a bunch of the fans are, or a bunch of the cast members are pissed off at it that like Hobson Shaw, which has like gone off the rails and done its own thing, yeah. is now the movie to do a justice for Shaw for Han thing. Even though they kind of did that already, and they should have just killed off Jason Statham's character and called it a day instead of being it friends was, with it, the guy that killed. Like yeah. that's why I always hated. Like I, I that's fair. I yeah. started disliking the Fast and Furious franchise once five hit. Once five hit. (laughs) Once, yeah. Five, six, seven, and eight. Terrible. Stupid. I've seen them a bunch of times, but I watch them in a way that's like, and it just infuriates me because I notice more and more things that are just so stupid about it. Even the whole franchise is just ridiculous. Well, it is. Well, I read an article where like how the timeline's all messed up and everything. Of course it is. And Hobbs and Shaw actually ruins it even more. Of course it does. uh, In their own way. But uh, four One might say that Hobbs and Shaw is the Captain Marvel of the Fast and Furious universe. Yeah, you basically- What up? Basically, look at it, except not because they already had established characters. But I get in this essence of what the movie depicts. Sure. Um, so four was meant to kind of reboot the whole thing and get it going on the right track. Because mm-hmm. one, fine. One and two kind of co- coexist together, fine. Because of Brian O'Connor. Three was just random. Yep. And actually, three was actually the lowest box office at the time, but yet it's the most purest street racing movie ever it, 100% out of all of them. Is. I've said this a bunch of times so there, if, you, if you're if you interested in the Fast and Furious franchise as a weird phenomenon I did a podcast about it last year with my friend Matt Jordan oh yeah and we called it it's called the Fast and Furious phenomenon and like we talked about what the hell it is about it and we pretty much went on a tangent about all the things Fast and the Furious yeah. so if you want to go back I don't know how far I think it was like my second or third deep dive yeah about Fast and Furious, so I'm just gonna plug that episode in there. Mm-hmm. But nice. anyways, yeah, and and then three was three was the opposite, but it was the most authentic. It was the most authentic, and it didn't do to as well. Extent, didn't do as well as the box office, and nope. actually Hobbs and Shaw did worse than that in the box office this weekend. Did, hey? Yeah, so I'm kind of ha- I'm, I'm very terrible. I'm happy about that because again, like I said before, it's the Rock's f you to the rest of the cast just because, and he's making it way over the top, which is such a dick move too because. Like I'm he not, comes I, into the I, franchise, yeah, and then he's the one that's gonna do a spinoff and give a big middle finger to everybody else that's been a part of this since yeah. the beginning. Like I understand, I don't know, I don't care for the de- like the stuff that goes on. No, I, I don't understand why Tyrese. He, he was the one. Th- I'll tell you what, though, the, from what I've been told by whatever this mm-hmm. and that is that okay, Vin Diesel was being unprofessional on set, whatever, but The Rock was the one who decided, oh, let's make this part of the social media thing. And that's yeah. when Tyrese got into it. Instead of keeping it in house, he exactly. Decided to so pull it the up. Rock was yeah. a dick in this one. I'm not behind him. I'm on yeah. Team Tyrese. Yes, he's off on a tangent too. But the Rock on his own, I, I think he was a dick to do that. And he, and he kept it going and kept it going. And it's like, well, that's not being a class act, man. Yeah, you might have been the most paid actor, but you didn't have the most best hits either. Like, well, yeah. skyscraper was a big piece of crap. I never saw it, but it looked stupid. Like, come on, really? Didn't do well. Baywatch didn't do well at Baywatch all. Baywatch did and not do well. And he argued that the fans didn't get it, and it's like, no, that's not what's what's there to get, man? It's Baywatch. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, come on. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a bad. We were movie. there for Alexander Daddario. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Um, but yeah, with the continuity of the fast, like four was supposed to reboot it. Five, whatever. Six actually helped th- the Tokyo Drift one and find out well who actually took him out and actually oh enhanced it even more. Okay, seems far fetched, but at the same time. No, this guy is who he is. I didn't mind six. I thought six was clever that they had like the opposites of their characters. And like the like, most realistic fun. save where Vin Diesel like crashed that car and caught Letty in midair. Of course, that'll happen every day. Obviously. I think I saw that on the road today. Naturally. Uh, happens all be- the time. Between a chipmunk and a goose. Naturally. Yeah. Yeah. He jumped go. on a Honda Civic. Perfect. Caught the goose, little baby goose actually, yeah. midair <laughs> and then landed yeah. on a smart car. Yeah. But I probably won't watch Hobbs and Shaw in theater. Uh, it's one of <laughs> no those. desire. No, not at all. Uh, that'll be a you know find it when it's streaming, mm-hmm. perhaps. It just you know what I, you I know you mentioned you're on Team Tyrese on this. Mm-hmm. I, I, I am and I'm not. On the one yeah. hand, 
I kind of get where he's coming from. On the other hand, he is the most useless one in the entire franchise. He's, he's not, not the even, one to be battling, be on the forefront of this. He's not even funny, first of all. Yeah. He is obnoxious in the whole thing. He is such a cliche. Yeah. And it's like, why are you... like? You are literally going there for a paycheck. You're not doing anything. You add nothing to the team. Yeah. If he was the same, like the 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 same badass kind of that he was in the second one, because they definitely changed him in the fifth one to be like the kind of funny, obnoxious one. Yeah. In the second one, he could actually like punch a windshield. Yeah, he's a little bit more or a window edgy like, and that yeah. kind of stuff. Like he just came out of he's a hardened criminal that came out of prison and he's pissed off. Like if they would have kept that version of him Mm -hmm. and incorporated some humor i think it would have been a much better character yeah like sure he was annoying sure he was a bit much but at least in the second one he was a little bit more grounded and these ones like all like how are how are his lungs able to handle or how is his throat every line (laughs) screaming to the point where ludicrous actually had to bring it up no uh the rock why are you always screaming? I thought it yeah. was. Oh yeah, he's like, why are why you always, always yelling? And it was so yeah. funny because he said it so calm. He's like, why are you always yelling? I'm right here. It's like they actually <laughs> turned the cameras off. Yeah, and then he just kept going, and then it's not actually <laughs> yeah. Hobbs saying yeah. it. It's the Rock that's like, Hon- dude, yeah. what the fuck, man? Honestly, man, like you said, we watched the Fast Series just for the fun of it. It's it's just fun to poke at. It has a few good one liners here and there. Beyond that, you're not there to like get any ma- massive content. No, for sure. But I mean. At one point, you just got to be like, you guys have to... The Fast and the Furious and the Ridiculous. They have to realize, you have to be a little bit self-aware. For sure. I don't think they care, though. No, I guess not. That's, that's you got to look at that. It's like, it's not quite apathy, but it's just like, you know what? We're doing this for fun. And well, they're doing it because, A, they're making a boatload of money. It's yeah. still making money, so there's no reason not to make it and yeah. keep everyone paid. Yep. Um, it's essentially like the Happy Madison crew where it's like, hey, we're going to keep making movies, except you know, maybe more bankable movies than the yeah. Happy Madison crew. Well, that's crew. more Broken Lizard even, too. Broken Lizard, the same Broken thing. Lizard same crew, like crew kind of going on. Yeah. yeah. But this one's more tied to a franchise as opposed to an actual company like a Happy Madison or a Broken Lizard. But anyway, same kind of deal. Yep. I don't know. I just think it's interesting that the guy who killed Han is now part of the crew and everything's cool with him. And yeah. everyone's put under the rug that he killed Han to send a message. And technically, he should have just died. Yeah. He got a building dropped on him. He should be dead. Yeah. Let's be perfectly honest. By a other realistic moment of Vin Diesel stomping his foot on the ground of a parkade that split the parkade open yeah. and he fell in because. Apparently, the streets always win, even though... You know what's most stupid about that? Mm. <laughs> Is they're like, well, we got to take them to the streets that we know. Literally, no one else was in LA except for three of them. That's Everybody true. else was in other places. It's like, if Tej I was... was in Miami. If I was Tej, <laughs> I was like, hey, man, I don't actually know these roads very well. Like, I'm sorry. Like, even Tyrese, he's like, yeah, I was in Barstow for the longest fucking time. I was time. locked up. I was locked up. There's a lot of up. construction going on. I came here for a weekend to watch a Lakers game. That was about it. <laughs> like, I had courtside tickets. Jack Nicholson was there. Yeah. I don't know these roads, dude. Even, like... I don't know. <laughs> Even sh- sure. like Hobbs. It was so stupid. Oh, these yeah. aren't your streets. Like you don't know these streets. And you were just car racing with your friends. Like no one ever put you as like this huge street fighter. You just had one story where you beat a guy over the head with a Turns out he was a city wrench. planner before that. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> so guys, look at what I did. The streets always win. Look at my blueprints. Yeah. <laughs> Plot Anyways, twist. I think it's just funny in this whole dramatic yeah. Fast and Furious thing is um yeah is is halfway to being so ridiculous that it's just sad. I think it's already passing. Is has it passed into sad? I think it's passing. Uh, sad. we'll see after this dust settles upon. Should have just let they should have just let it go when Paul Walker was done, gone. Yeah. Just come together, put it you aside. You guys had a, had a nice ending for that. You don't need the rest. Everything was fine. The sixth one worked good. Didn't need the seventh one. Yeah. You guys it's, even did the look away side by side. Like, come it on. It was nice. It worked out really nice. It was heartfelt. Yep. Anyways, let's get off this. What else you got? Uh, the Lord of the Rings series <gasps> is re- reportedly, and I saw this on IGN, going to have 20 episodes. And we kind of talked Damn. about it. Damn. 
kind of talked about it, how like all oh, too many episodes, you know, you lose interest. But I'm like, that was the topic of the day kind of in our chat yeah, with Anthony. Who's exactly. So I'll pose it to everyone else here too. It's like, oh, some people say like 20 episodes. Oh, that's a lot of commitment. I see it as like they have faith in the project and maybe that's what they need to pull it out. But let's say, oh, it's too many. 10 is good. What if they release season one, got like greenlit season one and two for 10 episodes each? And then how would people feel then? It's like, oh, that's pretty easy. But they'll come out within a month of each other. They give you enough time to binge it and then you'll get the second one coming out pretty quick. Like, it'd be the same thing. It's all in your head. It's all whatever. So what's your sweet spot? What's my sweet spot? I really don't care. I really don't. Doesn't matter as long as I've honestly average twenty no more than twenty four to twenty five episodes a season. I think twenty five is the most I've seen, and that's even for just regular like a How I Met Your Mother. I think the first few seasons had about twenty four episodes roughly. Okay, um, and then once you get but those into are more, half those are twenty minute episodes. Those are vastly different. True, but even still, you could burn through those forty. There's tons of other series that have like the forty forty five minute stuff. Sure. So and there's twenty twenty four episodes. So. It's not out of the realm of, you know, reasonable. So mm-hmm. it's just, you know, what's it going to be? Is that what they need to get the first season show going? But it just shows that they have uh, faith in the project because usually you have to get a pilot going out of this. Well, they and have the, okay, it, well, not, it's not just the faith of it. It's yeah. a bankable name. It's the Lord of the goddamn rings. Like, 100%. you're not going to, if you go to a studio and you walk in and they're not, they don't know what you're going to say. Yeah. And then you say something like, uh, oh, I've got an idea for a TV show. Yeah. It's called Hobbs and Shaw. They're going to look and you'll be like, what the fuck is that? You go into that meeting and you say, I have a Lord of the Rings TV show. Oh. Everybody, Gold. everybody jumps yeah. on the chairs. They literally throw the chairs out they of the window. They actually have Tolkien scholars, sit, by the way. They don't want to sit down. I'm yeah. trying to queue up the Lord of the Rings yeah. song and I can't fucking get the fucking thing. Awkward. Is it happening? No. 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 God. Here it is. You walk into that meeting. Just I play have that. The Lord. I have <laughs> yeah. this. I have this. I have this. And everyone's going to be like, <laughs> oh my God, <clears throat> is it real? And then just like the Rohirrim in Helm's Deep, the light gets shone when you look. What is it? Look to the east? Look to the west? Yeah, look to the east. Anyways, the light's fucking shining and they're all like, we have our next pilot. <laughs> Something along those lines. I don't know. Maybe it's not that dramatic, but I think probably it'd be not. Really funny. But anyways, yeah. That, but that's like you just walk in there with that, and they're going to yeah. be like, "Yep, here's all the money in the world." Well, and they have they have all the lore behind it. They have mm-hmm. legitimate Tolkien scholars that know this world in not and surprised. out. So, and Strain McKellen himself is like hardcore into that stuff. Like he's read the Silmarillion and everything. Wow. He, even during the filming, is it going to be Gandalf? I don't. I don't think it's. I think it's going to be a different age. Oh, so the, that's I don't. Be interesting. But. Technically, Gandalf could be in any age. Right. Um, I don't think Sir Ian McKellen's going to reprise his role, as far as I know. You know but who, who would be a good young Gandalf? I think Richard Madden would be a good young... Because I, I here's, I here's think the Richard funny Madden thing, actually. The anything. lore behind uh, the wizards, yep. they're actually very like good-looking men and like... Uh, and young, and they don't age. Like they're almost, they're invincible. Or, I see a Kingsman prequel. Yeah, <laughs> the Kingsmen are actually the wizards that wow. turn into the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> but they they chose the the look of an old wise man so that people would trust them. Because if you look at the yeah. young th- young guy, whatever good looking, like the like, Striders that protect. Like, yeah, they, get the hell out of here. Well, even they won't take them as seriously. Even the Hobbits don't trust the Striders. True. The, the, and the, the striders the regular are men anyway men but with uh, swords. so they could do a young looking gandalf whatever but well and because anyway. game of thrones as shitty as the last season was it banked and people are looking for epic stories like that and they have that fantasy world ready to go so. it's in that's what i'm saying you walk mm-hmm. in with that thing and you know it's going to happen light's going to shine and they're going to take over the mm-hmm. helms deep <gasps> what's yep. next uh, Wesley Snipes is cast and coming to America too, which again, I don't understand why the project's even going forward after 30 years, but apparently there's something I'm gonna there. going to see it. Oh, I'm going to see it too. It's bloody hilarious. I, I want them to do that and I want them to do the trading places too, even though none of it would make sense and it doesn't need to happen. Oh yeah, that's true. I love well, those movies so much. Both of them. Frick, that's hilarious. Yeah, those were like on non-stop so during the, during the early, early 90s, 2000s. So nuts. good. 
for but, movies uh, that came out in like the late yeah. 80s like it was so yeah he didn't get cast as blade but he's getting something i suppose <laughs> did he act, did he get mad for not getting cast as blade uh you could tell he was probably a little chapped but at the same I didn't time read the comments. no i didn't read too much into it he's just like oh that's that's hollywood basically he kind of just took the political i was like ah, it is what it is i'm kind of pissed i wish they asked me whatever what you didn't you even do? give a shit to do the third one you were that, such a nightmare on the third one you think the studio is going to want like they're going to look at that history like they yeah. may not look at your like the a whole history but People they're going to look forget. at the fact that's like you know what this is kind of how you acted back then yeah. and it's you're going to have to do some stuff to make it yeah. so it's not and when you're putting a lot of money into it it's a risk to take on somebody who may have been a liability then and is not mm-hmm. now, but it's hard to shed the skin of who they were back then because True. you've got so much money. Because once well, you start production, that's when you're going to find out. And he's still been off on be. his tangents here and there and went crazy. Yeah. Didn't he go to jail for a little bit? Or he was, was in jail for tax evasion. Yeah, it's small. But who Petty was, crime. That's like, that's a Hollywood crime. Basically. Like, it's almost like if you don't go for tax evasion, then you're like, what are you doing? Come on. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. I'm so excited for Mahershal Ali. I think he's just the best. Yeah. It'll be good. Uh, I have Titans season two trailer. Did you ever see the Titans yet on no, not yet. the DC comic? It's really good. Honestly, young I think Titans? It, is that the one where the guy says F Batman? Yeah. Mm. The young Robin. Actually, it's, it's very good. Very dark. Uh, very, it's dark. I've so, passed by it 20 times at least. I, I think it's worth your time. Yeah. Um, and then now even more so because it's, oh, we've already been hinted Batman. We've seen silhouette or just the just the actual costume and now uh they're actually revealed ian glenn who was jorah mormont on game of thrones as batman kalishi yeah wow. robin robin <laughs> so that'll be interesting with him as uh the batman wow that. moving from dragons to bats that one yep interesting character mm-hmm. uh yeah he'd be a good batman i think I he's think. got he's got that stoic look right he could pull it off i think because yeah, that's, yes. I guess Batman kind of has that, could have that mm-hmm. stoic look in a way, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just mm-hmm. thinking of like the originals, like in the 90s. Those guys were always like kind of like clean cut, proper, and more like that. He doesn't have the jaw, though. He's got more of a, he's got more of a narrow jaw. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see how his jaw fills in that. This is also cowl. a weathered Batman years later, right? So almost old man. It seems like the whole premise around Batman, except for Matt Reeves, is, is let's find out mm-hmm. our old Batman. That's the excuse that everyone's using. It's like it's Batman, but it's an old Batman. Like he's grizzled. He's got twenty four wrinkles and crow's feet. I mean, <laughs> he's seen some shit. Okay, they'll, they'll clean that up. They'll clean that up with CGI. Yeah, maybe they'll de-age him to a young Jorah. Uh huh. Back when he was chasing his Kalishi. Yeah. Uh, I have one more thing. I think we left it on the list. Disney Plus is developing a Home Alone. A Night at the Museum and Cheaper by the Dozen, Diary and Diary of a Wimpy, Wimpy Kid reimagination series. That's weird. So the way they're getting away with this is basically they're doing that word reimagine. It means it's like it's very loosely based on that kind of event or whatever. So the Night at the Museum, they're stretching it out on a whole series of events that happen and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So no main plot line other than a series of things happen every night. Okay. Cheaper by the dozen. Who knows how that one will play out? Home Alone. But it was funny because Macaulay Culkin released a, a picture. Did you see it? Mm-hmm. He's like, he poked fun at it. He's like, yeah, this is what common, uh, uh, what a, nowadays Home Alone would be in his. It was like him sitting on his stomach with the like computer and like an N64 controller on the ground, just like eating some food or some shit. So it was, it was pretty funny. He was poking at it too. Oh, he's got an N64 controller. Yeah. I wonder if we have ours. I still have them. Do you still have... I actually had to buy... No, the controllers are missing. I had to buy new ones. Oh. You left them somewhere. Yeah, I did. I'm blaming it on you. Okay, fine. But yeah, Disney Plus, they're kind of doing whatever now with the Fox merger, so... They're doing a lot of stuff I don't know. on their own. They, they can do whatever the hell they want at this point, but whether it's going to be good is remains to be seen. They also seen. have an ESPN, I realized. Yeah, I they're adding that as that. part they're, of an add-on, right? That's huge. So they they're going to dominate. They said Hulu and ESPN... They're going to dominate. ...is going to be a 12 or $13 add-on. Oh, shit. I believe a month. So yeah. you're gonna end up paying like thirty five bucks a month. So there, you're almost at what uh, you pay for. I'm like but most I, people are paying that for cable just for the sports channels. For sure. So if ESPN works out to be like a ESPN Plus thing or whatever works out to be worth it, people will probably jump ship and do it. Or they'll just have that too, and next thing you yeah. know, they're realizing, oh, we're spending two hundred dollars on television streaming content. Which is no different than when we had our satellite and our cable at the same yeah. time. And literally, I've said this, literally putting people in the same loop as it was with cable. True. And then Just people are going to look evolved. at it and be like, 
while I'm flipping through all of these movies and streaming yeah. shows that I don't really care to see until I find what I want. It's essentially flipping through channels. I, I, I've sit there through Netflix. I'm like, I don't want to watch this. I've seen it. I don't feel like this. I don't feel like that. Whatever. Well, even yesterday you came over and I was just like, here, there's uh, Netflix, Amazon, and Crave. Go hell. And I just ended up watching Age of Ultron. There you go. Because that movie is so good now since Endgame came out. Like that movie is so much better because of Endgame, <laughs> which goes to show that it's like, I was kind of weak on its own, even though yeah, I still yeah, enjoy yeah. it. It was kind of weak on its own, but it was so much better because of Endgame. Because if you're watching it and you're like, Speaking of that, do you find a lot of the MCU movies like are are some the the weaker ones? Do they all of them? They get elevated more just because they're whole, a part of the whole thing. Everything now. That's why I made. That's why Endgame stands on its own as being its own great achievement. Because and I've said this yeah a bunch of times, it retroactively makes the entire MCU that much better. Yeah, because of how much care was actually put towards everything. Everything actually means something. Yep. This is the problem with Game of Thrones, where nothing meant anything in Game of Thrones. So you get your finale and you're like, oh, so nothing had any meaning to it whatsoever. It was this almost nihilistic attempt at just burn everything for the sake of burning everything because there is no meaning to what we're doing. Yeah. Whereas the Avengers is like, no. This matters to all of us, mm-hmm. which is the same reason why I was so mad at Captain Marvel because it decided to do the Hobbs and Shaw thing and be like, nope, we're going to we're going to do whatever we want. Yeah, we're not going to care about anything. We're going to take the things that we want. We're going to give nothing back mm-hmm. and we're going to just really make sure that the rest of the MCU suffers if I'm not here. <laughs> Which that's what they did. Yep. Well, luckily, Endgame didn't do that. I still don't understand why she's in all the posters. She was in it for all of five minutes, and it was all she needed to be in it for. And I'm just happy that she wasn't a part of the Avengers Assemble. Yeah. Because how they've rolled out her character and how Brie Larson has been conducting herself since she's got that role, in my mind, is <laughs> utterly represent- reprehensible. I'm going to use everyone assemble except you don't assemble don't assemble (laughs) because you clearly do not care about this franchise in the least you just care about yourself yeah because that's what it seems like so for them to keep her off to the side yeah is I believe the correct thing for a movie that decided to act like it's the most important thing in the world all on its own so yes yep all the other movies in the MCU are that much better. Even the weaker ones. Even ones like Ant-Man and the Wasp. Even Iron Man 2. Mm-hmm. Even um, to whoever doesn't like it. I think I think you're crazy because I love it. But Iron Man 3. Yeah. I understand why people don't like it, but I think it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, to Thor the Dark World, especially Thor the Dark World. Yeah. That one, I think, that one in Age of Ultron, those two movies got elevated the most yeah. because of Endgame. I, I find now, after seeing them like many times and seeing the end result like with Endgame and stuff like that, it's like... Um, if if a f- one of the movies kind of fell short on the on the story a little mm-hmm. bit, like because there's some that like f- like Iron Man three, it, yes the story probably was a little weaker than most of them, but the character development on Tony uh, Tony Stark's psyche and where he's at and bringing in pep uh, and bringing the idea of rescue exactly I was like that was kind of like the first inkling. It's like oh she's wearing the so there you go. So if it doesn't elevate it in one way, it finds a different way. So I. And and let's not also forget that us as fans are going to make those connections whether they exist or not. True. Like it's, we're going to we are yeah. going to actively go out of our way to make them because A, we want it to make to work. If you want and, enough, you'll find it. But the thing is, if you are able to find it, well guess what? You've yeah. just there, there, you've given credence to something yeah. that may have otherwise not had had creed like not have been able to give creed been able to receive any credence from anybody. Yeah. You know? And you're not just giving it for just no reason whatsoever. Yeah. Like I think that's a that's a big deal. So if you are able like to do it then have at her. That's the good for you. Number 23 effect. I guess so. Have you seen that movie? Yeah, not for a long time. I didn't yeah. care for it. See, I liked it a lot. I don't you know did, why. Hey? I don't know why. I think it's just cuz we saw so much comedy from Jim Carrey and then you see this you're like, "What?" See, the that's heck? what it tur- that's what the Truman show to an extent, but that one still had some comedy. That's what Eternal Sunshine does for me. See, Eternal I think his character sunshine development, just, like the way which characters uh, he chose, it just keeps darker and darker. Twenty three to me might have been a little weak, but for me, like 
how it all played out. It was such a di- it was just such a change because I think that was the first one you and I both saw of his that wasn't comedy because I saw Eternal Sunshine after number twenty three. Yeah, exactly. But when I saw Eternal Sunshine, I was like, oh, this is unbelievably depressing, but unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. it was such a good movie. Yeah. Fucking Kate Winslet's amazing. Everything yeah. she does, man. Jim Carrey's all, like was was incredible for sure. Yeah, but Kate Winslet, Kate Winslet dude, she still got it. She still got it. <laughs> Mike Tyson punch. Yeah. What else we got? Nothing. Oh, I forgot to give my sweet spot. My sweet spot, as I said, for the TV show. Ooh. Um, yeah, I remember we like completely <laughs> was, went off on that. Was that a one. long time ago. Go yeah. On. I just remembered it now. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't want to forget it and realize that like I didn't. Where is uh, your sweet we didn't spot? talk about it. So <laughs> you said it doesn't matter for you as long as the content's good. Yeah. Mine is either eight episodes at 50 minutes an episode Mm -hmm. or three episodes at an hour and a half each like Sherlock the BBC did. It's an hour and a half each. Mm -hmm. No, but I'm saying for like the even the eight episodes, that's your high end. That would be a sweet spot. That's my sweet spot. I'll watch anything. Okay. If it's good. But I prefer it to be eight episodes at about an hour each. Well, trick I went and then or yeah. again three hour uh, mm-hmm. three episodes at an hour and a half each like yeah. Sherlock did. I thought that was really cool because it was like it was essentially mini movies in a season. Yeah, you didn't realize it. And it's like oh, how many episodes I watch? Oh, only one. Yeah, <laughs> it's like okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fair. Yeah, I, it, I will say my low end though. If it's you say the three as long as they're that long, but if there are any shorter and they're short episodes on top. Oh, of Oh no, I have no problem I'm just with like. like Mm. I have no problem with 40 episodes of 20 minutes each, even yeah. though the time might end up being the exact same. For some reason, it feels differently. Wow. And I can start and stop it. Like, I can finish an episode relatively quickly yeah. and then move on to the next one. True. Because what's happening now, and we talked about it, is that it's less of it's less of just how long it is. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's not really because it's long, mm-hmm. but I think because there's so much of it and that they're really long, it's virtually impossible to hit everything, which you're not expected to hit everything, but in a way you kind of feel like you have to because yeah. everyone's watching so many different things. Like I just finished watching season three of La Casa de Papel, okay. which for some reason Netflix decided to call it Money Heist, which has nothing to do with the original title. But anyways, okay. great show. And season three was good. It yeah. was a weaker of the three, but it was still a good season of TV, right? Yeah. It's a Spanish show. Mm-hmm. Sorry, they speak Portuguese in there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's Portuguese. Sorry. Um, and it's really well done. Yeah. And I don't know how many people are actually watching it, but that's one show that has 50 minute episodes. And I think they're about eight episodes a season. Mm-hmm. And that takes me away from something else that may have six, seven, eight episodes or something else. Like, so I'm watching that. You're watching something else. Yeah. They don't intersect at all. And then, you know, you find that you're, you're watching, t- you're watching shows that nobody else has seen because mm-hmm. they're watching something else and they don't have time to see what you're seeing by the time you've already seen it. Yeah, that's fair. So it's really, it's really interesting what's happening right now with the way yeah. that we're. It's it's such an overload. I will bring a good up a good point with you and Anthony even agrees with that. Like how it's short is better for the low commitment because let's say now with Netflix it's rolling out so much content, you yep. do want to see everything. So that yep. low commitment level of just like you know I'm gonna get my initial feel of that what that show's about, mm-hmm. whether it's brand spanking new or it's a show of uh, adaptation of something else, whatever you get a feel for it for that first episode, first season, whether it's five episodes, mm-hmm. six or eight, whatever. But they usually trickle around the 10 to 13 is, I think is this is a normal spot for yeah. new shows on Netflix. That's what uh, I feel the defender shows did wrong to how many episodes yeah. aside from daredevil, like aside from daredevil themselves, yeah. sorry, daredevil season one and season three were, I thought they were perfectly executed in terms of how many they had yeah season two only needed about eight episodes mm-hmm. defenders did good and they only had the eight episodes but i don't know why the other three was stretched to 13 because clearly you could see that they didn't have enough ideas for 13 to make it cohesive mm-hmm. that's the issue they run into yeah but, interesting but, but but anyways but that's why that's my sweet spot yeah nice what else you got? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. That's it. Another yeah. week. Uh, we did pretty good for just the two of us with yeah, yeah. Uh, very few information. Yeah. Don't forget next week, we're not doing a regular episode. I will be releasing my deep dive. I think it was about two hours or so with uh, Brandon Hall. And we talked Hollywood trends. So if you're interested in uh, discussion about Hollywood trends and where we think it is and using Once Upon a Time in Hollywood as a skeleton for that topic, 
I thought it was a lot of fun. Brandon's a super intelligent and really energetic and awesome dude. So I definitely, definitely, definitely think it's worth it uh, to take a listen just to hear what he thinks because I tried to play off of him as much as I possibly could. So, yes, that's another episode of The F Word. This is episode actual live show 60 on Anchor. So we've had another little milestone. Um, But technically, it's episode 70 on the rotation, including the deep dives. Make sure you're following me on Twitter at the F words G. If you want, you can email us at the F podcast at gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter, which I just literally fucking said that in the beginning. Sorry. Uh, on Instagram at the F podcast on Facebook at the F podcast. You can follow Anthony at the lazy Canadian on Instagram as well. Um, and wherever you're listening to, whether it's Anchor, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Podbean, Radio Public, YouTube, or the Saskatchewan Podcast Network website. We appreciate you listening for wherever you're listening from. And if you do have the option to like or comment, uh, it would really appreciate it, especially on Apple Podcasts from what I hear. Apparently, that's a good one to get rated on if you feel like rating. If not, then we totally understand. Uh, But we appreciate it that you're stopping by to listen to us anyways. Um, That's all I have. That's it. That's all. I'm G. I'm Bass. And we're out. (laughs) Thank you.